It's one of the greatest metal riffs of all time and also one of the riffs I see played incorrectly the most, but fear not. You're about to master Master of Puppets. <laughs> Hello kids and welcome to a brand new Riftastic installment of Weekend Wang Shop here with your good buddy, Uncle Ben. Master of Puppets by Metallica opens up with two of the most punishing riffs in metal history. I remember I heard that song for the first time whenever I just started playing the guitar and I really wanted to learn how to play it. And I sat down with a tab for it that I saw in a magazine and tried to keep up and I absolutely couldn't do it, it smoked me. But whenever I finally had this tune down and mastered, it really did take my rhythm guitar playing to a new level. It was only years later that I sat down and played along with it again, only with ears a little bit sharper from having played music for a while by then, and realized that I'd been playing a lot of it wrong. And I see a lot of other people play these riffs wrong too, not really by any fault of their own. I mean, it's really hard to understand what's going on with the guitar tone with it being so distorted and so scooped. Plus it's going like 100 miles an hour. And there are so many inaccurate tabs for this floating around the internet that it's insane. But I spent some time sitting down with the isolated guitar track that I found here on YouTube, as well as watching several different live videos of James and Kirk playing it, and uh, have concluded with what I find to be the authoritative way to play it. But before we get you back on the right track and playing this riff correctly, let's hear it again at stepdad speed. And as always, you can find a full tab for this week's lick on my Instagram page, so be sure to go find Ben Eller Guitars, follow me while you're on there, and find the tab for this week's lick, learn how to play it, and then upload a video of yourself shredding along through it, along with the hashtag Weekend Wank Shop. That way you can make Uncle Kirk and Uncle James real proud. First things first, a quick word about the absolutely brutal picking on this riff. It's all downstrokes. No upstrokes at all involved in this entire thing. It's all downstrokes. <laughs> So it is super, super fast, but it's really great if you're looking to improve your downstroke speed, which is something that everybody should do. From my experience, a lot of downstroke heavy metal players like James tend to tilt the pick into what Troy Grady in Cracking the Code would call an upwards pick slant. So in other words, my pick isn't simply going down flat through the strings like this, because whenever you do that, you go through the string, then you have to pull back out, through the string, pull back out, and all that jazz. So you kind of have this sort of secondary motion going on. Now a downwards pick slant like this will result in downstrokes that go kind of onto the A string. Again, you have to pull out every time you do that. Uh, whereas if you play with an upwards pick slant, again, like a lot of metal rhythm players tend to, the downstroke naturally goes away from the E string. So it makes it a little easier to get behind it for the next downstroke. So maybe try playing this with an upwards pick slant. So your downstrokes go like this. Use your metronome, take it slow, start off at a slow pace where you're totally in control and gradually work that metronome up in increments of three, you know, two or three BPM. Sit there for a little while till you got it mastered, bring it up a few more BPM, you'll be smoking in no time. Okay, so the very first thing you're gonna do here at the start of the song is an E power chord. This is just my open E string and my second fret A. Hit it and then mute it real fast. After this, what you're gonna do is jump up here to the 10th position. So I've got 10th fret E, 12th fret A. I'm going to play a D power chord, then move down a fret and play a D flat, then move down another fret and play a C. I see a lot of tabs that have James doing like a three finger power chord, so root fifth octave, like 
that, but after watching a lot of live videos just a second ago, I saw him basically all of them. Whenever he was playing those power chords, he was doing them with pointer and little finger like this, which indicates more of a two note, just E string and A string power chord rather than this three finger grip. So yeah, E, D, D flat C. Okay, now as for the next riff here, it walks down in a completely chromatic sequence going down the E string. Chromatic meaning it uses all 12 notes. This is vital because there's one note at the end that I see people leave out 99.9% .9 of the time. But again, that's what makes this riff so cool is it's all the notes. It's also all picked. There's no pull-offs in here. I see people go stuff like that and that is not even remotely it. It's all picked. Okay, so for starters, what we're going to do here is to start off with two open low E string chugs followed by the 12th fret on the E. Notice that one was not palm muted. Pretty much all the fretted notes here are not palm muted and the open low E's are palm muted. Kind of the Metallica tradition. So I got two open E's, 12, two open E's, 11. Then we're gonna go two open E's and play those same three power chords from earlier. D, D flat, C. Again, if you're tracking the pointer finger here, it's just walking down the E string a fret at a time using all 12 notes. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. After this, we run into this sequence. I'm gonna play the open low E string two times, then seven. After this, I'm gonna play open low E two times, then six. And then two more open low E's. Now, when we reach the fifth fret, the sequence changes just a little bit. Let's re recap what we got here so far. So, chug, chug, 12. Chug, chug, 11. Chug, chug, 10, 9, 8 with power chords. Chug, chug, 7. Chug, chug, 6. And then two chugs after that. Now, when we get to the fifth fret, this is where it's going to get a little different. You're going to hit fifth, then one open chug. Fourth, one open chug. Third, one open chug. So I've kind of gone from having these double chugs to a single chug. Now here's the part that most everybody plays wrong. You're going to play the second low E, followed by the first low E. So again, that completes the entire 12 note chromatic sequence. This is how the riff goes. Usually I see people do this move. Um, going two to open with a pull off. And again, I see tabs like that all over the place, even in guitar magazines and stuff like that. It's just wrong. Listen to the isolated guitar track, watch them play it live. You'll hear F sharp and F there at the very end of the riff. So basically that last section of the riff there goes five, open, four, open, three, open, two, one. Notice the two and the one were palm muted. All of our other fretted notes have not been palm muted. But they're at the very end. Those two do get palm muted, so just be sure to kind of crush those back there at the right hand. And basically, just play through that four times, just like this. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Just like that. Now after this, we get to the real devastator of the tune. The infamous finger spider riff. This is a great riff to learn to show you how important it is to use your little finger. This is a position playing kind of riff. As in, if it's at the first fret, it's this guy's job. If it's at the second fret, it's this guy's job. Third fret territory, fourth fret territory, no matter what string or whatever. Really teaches you to use your fingers in sequence well and how to get that pick jumping across the strings too. Really good one. And just like the other riff, this is 100% picked. There are no pull-offs or anything like that in this riff, other than the, the slides on the power chords there. But I see people use hammer-ons and cheat all the time like this. That is just not it. As for the muting strategy on this, if you're playing the low E string, it should be palm muted. If you're playing the A string, it should not be palm muted. That way you get that cool mix of chugs and accents through this riff. So we're gonna start off on the low E string here. We're gonna play open and one. Then the middle finger here plays the second A. Low E string, open and one. Third fret A, low E string open in one, fourth fret A. So basically the A string is just walked up chromatically now. Two, three, four. After this, we're gonna start walking back down. Low E string goes open in one, third fret here on the A. And then after this, you're gonna play open in one on the E. And then the second fret A, two times. So that just went. 
Again, really important to follow the correct fingerings there. Middle, ring, little, ring, middle. Just like that. The next section has another part in it that people frequently play very slightly wrong. Check this out. Okay, this starts off feeling just like the last riff did there. You're gonna play open and one on the E, two on the A, open and one on the E, third A, and then this is the part that people play wrong. You're gonna play first E to open E. So you kind of reverse it from being open to one to one to open. Usually I just see people do this and just chug that low E string twice right there like this. And you know, that's, that's almost exactly the same thing, but it should go like this. Open one, two, open one, three, one, open. Then followed by these little sliding power chords here. I've got a G, which is the third and fifth. Slide it down a fret. Open low E. Same little sliding thing again. Open low E. And then one more set of slides. So again, that last phrase right there, we'll have. And just so you know that one to open thing gets used in the next iteration of the riff too, whenever the drums come in and the riff changes very slightly to that right there, before they hit that B power chord, there it is, doing that same one to open then the power chord. Very little thing, but that is how it is played. So now that you know, let's put it all together, this time at a moderate pace. One, two, three, four. Two, three, There you go guys, a super challenging riff to hone your metal rhythm guitar picking chops and turn you into a downstroking beast. Hopefully that'll answer your questions about how to play two of the coolest riffs in metal history. That way the whole world might go on playing these things properly, just the way that James and Kirk and Cliff intended. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to my channel here and follow me on Instagram and Twitter, at Ben Eller Guitars. Also, if you're interested in booking some one-on-one -on -one Skype lessons with me, be sure to drop me an email, benhellerguitars at gmail.com. I'll get back to you and we'll talk about rates and times and stuff. Thank you guys again for watching and thanks to Metallica for making one of the metal records that really did change my life. Sitting down with Master of Puppets and trying to learn all that stuff and play along with it really did help me turn my rhythm guitar playing from punk to hunk overnight. Cheers guys, stay tuned for another cool lick next week.